Okay, we are live. G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. I'm going to do a, a burnt sunset today. Um, as a lot of people have been messaging me, um, hoping I'm well, I am well. There's a lot of bushfires in Australia and I'd just like to acknowledge that um, I am okay where I am, but uh, the eastern side of Australia and a lot of other parts of Australia, they're in pretty bad way with these bushfires, but uh, we're wishing everybody luck and well. And um, all the best to you and your families. And there's a lot of animals been getting hurt and killed in that Australian devastating bushfires as well. So everyone's looking out for those Australian wildlife animals as well. But anyway, this is about a live painting, all right? So while we get started, just let me load up my um, piece here so I can see what people say. I've got everything ready, I'm pretty sh assuming. Now I need that, yes, that's the one I want. Okay, then I can see your comments and I need to just move that to the other screen over here so it's a bigger screen and then I'll be able to see. What have we got? We've got 22 people watching, good stuff. I've got to turn the volume down so let me make sure, yeah, that's down, okay. And where are we? Get my mouse back over here. So thank you everybody for joining me. I haven't done a live one for a while. Okay, and, and let's hope, oh, I've got the wrong contacts in. I don't know how long this is gonna go for. Hopefully we can get it done within an hour. We've got Sarah Shack, g'day Sarah Shack, and um, my painting, um, safe and sound, good stuff. She's got your painting safe and sound, good. Hi Ian, hope all is well. Yes, everything is well here, okay, with me anyway. Uh, but the rest of Australia is burning. I'm in the western side of Australia, for those people who have been concerned about me and sending me all those caring messages. Australia, I'm on the west side of it. Most of the fires have been on the eastern side. There are some in the west side as well, but they're not actually near where I'm located, but I'm well, all right. Now, we've got water. I hope my sound is well. Uh, I received it, sorry to hit enter by accident, that's all right. Is my sound coming from this microphone? Oh, hopefully it is. Last time I was live, it was all plugged in, but it wasn't working properly. Can someone tell me if they can hear the taps on my microphone here? And we're gonna get underway, so we want some brushes. Uh, I need my applicating brush. I've got some colours laid out here. I'm going to bring you over in a minute to show you exactly what I've got. And I want a couple of blending brushes for, for the clouds that I do. I use brushes from the hardware store. They're just house painting brushes, two inch, one inch, one and a half inch, whatever. And look for stability when you're in the store and think, yeah, I can manipulate and make turmoil and get the vibe of the cloud happening in the painting. A little skinny one like that ain't any good for blending clouds. That's good for applying your paint on there, getting it on there, no mucking around, but see the difference in the heads? This is great for blending, in my opinion, the way I blend. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll do any little clouds, but I'll put one up there just in case, because we're going live, and live will always trip you up and make something go wrong. Okay. Just having a look at some of the things there. Hello, Ruby. Hello, Lola. Hello, Carol. Jamie, g'day. Hear you great. Well, I didn't even check to see if anyone said yes, we can hear you great. Sounds good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Think positive. Be happy and every day's healthy. All right, that's what I say. Got me water going here as well. All right, so I'm going to put a horizon line in here. Lola, always be prepared. Yes, Chris Allen. Now, an horizon line, I've got a, where is it? I've done so many videos, but not all of them are up yet. <laughs> you want to do a great big painting, you need a great big pencil. I want the horizon, never have your horizon too bloody high, and never have it too flaming low, but lower is better than higher. And this one I want probably, I've got a brand new toothbrush, so I want enough room for the water, about, I want it under halfway about there, like that. 
keeping it straight. If you think straight, you'll draw a straight line. What you can do is put your pencil on the side and then, oh no, it won't work because you need another pencil to hold it. But anyway, I want to do, like I said, it's going to be like a burnt sunset. Uh, we've been getting a lot of photos in Australia, the way the, the burnt smoke in the sky is virtually creating the colours of the Aboriginal flag, believe it or not, which is a yellow circle and red and black on the top and bottom. Um, I'm not going to create that in this painting, but that sort of aspect I'm going for. So it's a burnt sunset in relation to the bushfires we're having here. So I'm going for some reds. So come over here. I'll just have a mouthful of my coffee. I am sad to see your beautiful country burning. Yes, it's sad. I love what you do. Thank you all the advice. Robert from Paris, France. Thank you, Robert. All right, that can go there. Uh, I want a bit of retarder. Now, I'm going to mask up my horizon line. How many people we got there? 48. Oh, I just went to 46. Two of you is buggered off. Sorry. I haven't painted nothing yet. I'm gibbering on and nothing's been painted. I've got my horizon line masked off because this is going to have some retarder in it and I don't really want retarder under the bottom half because it can lift if I'm too heavily handed, okay? So come on over here and we'll get into this painting because I've been gibbering on for about six minutes and nothing's been done yet. Alrighty. So, got some paints there. I will put the paints that I'm using in the description below after the live is finished. All right. Um, oh, golly, hang on a minute. Have a look at me mess while I find me white paint. There it is. Get those brushes out the way. Okay, so we're going to... This is just soft student craft paint. There it is there. Okay, it's just white. And it's a very soft body. Oh, that's water, not retarder. Uh, why am I doing this? Because I want to blend up the sky area. So a lot of you familiar viewers of my stuff know how I prep my canvas. So I'm just prepping it with the... Now this, you know what I might do? I'm gonna, cause this is gonna be, I'm using, there we go, put some of that in there as well. This out of the tube is red gold. Now you can make up an orange or an orangey red. Now let's get that in there. Okay, cause this is gonna be the flavor. Look at that. And then I'll paint part colors on top of this as well. All right. Gee, it looks like a skin colour. I hope it works out. I've got a, this is going to have more red in it, so don't worry. Now, it is acrylic paint I paint with. Some people always ask, is it acrylic or oil? I am always painting my paintings in acrylic. Okay, there's that. Pretty. See the... The brush, don't muck around, it gets it right on there. And that's what I like about this applicating brush. Now I need to wipe that. Uh, now I'm thinking, where are we? We want some red. So we'll come down here now. And we'll pick this up. Maybe with a bit of retarder so we're not going to be, get some of this red gold. Now it's darker than what's on the board. It's just so as the board wasn't pure white. Okay, I want to pretty much get this in there. Look at that nice fiery smoke, sun hazing colors there. I'm, I'm, yeah, look at that, there we go. Now I want to just artistically give it the vibe it needs to push them across the canvas. I'm doing them horizontally across like that. 
Beautiful. Now I need to wash my brush, so I'm going to wipe it on a rag first. Okay, I've wiped it on a rag, and I have to go over here to wash the brush. All right. Back to the canvas. Sorry I can't read your messages straight away. Hi Ian from Polly. Hello there Ian, says Grayscale. G'day Anthony, how are you Cobber? Now we want a bit of um, oh, purpley colour in the sky. I'm just going to grab dioxine purple. Um, we'll get some of this. And I'm going to get down there, everybody. There we go. Dioxine purple out of the tube. And I'm going to mash it in with that red gold. Well, I don't want it too dark. That's a bit dark. Oh, but it'll work up there because it's lightening down. Okay, let's go. Okay, now I want things looking like they're coming out over us, so this is going to come from, where are we, there, oh it's a bit dark, and come over our head, that'll do, just like that, grab yourself a blending brush and a paper towel, and I want to blend that purple that I've just put on there now with turmoil inside our sky there, okay? So why I put the red gold in the white is so as I'm not having to paint red gold over the white and then this... I've okay, so I'm, I'm on and off twisting, giving it turmoil, manipulating it. I'm not just blending in one way, I'm giving it it's vibe. It needs the vibe of it there. Wipe it so as you're not transferring too much into the lighter colours where you don't want it to go. There we go. Beautiful nuke. That's looking good. There we go. I think that'll do it. Yes, that will do it. <coughs> Okay, now we want a bit of a sun setting, a burnt sunset, so I want that about here. So I'm going to grab a big pouncer, just grabbing a pouncer out of my pouncer bucket. Okay, come down here on the board. Now I'm going to grab white, and this is titanium white, but with a pouncer you need a bit of help. Uh, so where is my flowing white? Here it is here. I'm going to put some flowing white down there as well. Okay. Because you know when you're flying a kite and you need someone to hold it back so you start running and they throw the other end in the air? It's helping. So that's what this titanium, this white's going to do to the titanium. The titanium is there, but it's not quite got that kite in the air so we're going to put this in there now bang she's all up there she's gonna look at that beautiful now we're going to have roughly here yes beautiful now this is going to be one big about there i want it about there yep Try and get it round, Ian. You could have used a stencil for this, but because I've already painted the sky on there already, it's not going to work. Around. Trying to make it round and artistic. And then we can colour this in. Like that. It'll make sense when it's all finished, you know. So, there we go. Grab some more white. I'm just grabbing some more white. 
I might put more white down because I really want it a bit more vibrant than that. I think vibrant's the word I'm looking for. Okay, so yeah, so this is, this is the flow white, mainly up here, there we go, get the edge artistically done, beautiful. Now don't worry about here, we're going to put a little bit of yellow there. So I've got some yellow down here on my paletto. So we'll get some of that down, there we go, bit of yellow. I'm keeping my tubes to one side, that way I can remember what colours I've used. Alright, I'm just using the same pouncer. And down the bottom of this sun, I hope, let's hope we can get some of that yellow there. There we go, we got some in there. It's there, so now I'm just going to pat it and use the pouncer to blend it, okay? And if you wish, which I'm going to do, I just wiped that pouncer, got most of that build up off there, picking up some more white. I don't want the yellow to overpower. Now this might look a bit crooked at the moment. It's going to have stuff in front of it. Okay. Uh, when you watching the replay and you get to the end of it, you'll see. Alrighty. Hi all from Spain. Hello from Spain. That'll do. Put that in there. Put that in there. I've got to wash that big brush, which is done there. Um, now I want to put some clouds in there. Okay, so back down to my massively dirty palette. I'm just going to use titanium white. How long have I been going for? 16 minutes, not too bad. Put that over there. And I'm going to find a fan brush. Now that is pretty much wet, my son. I want to get some white and just do some clouds here and there now, okay? So I want to get maybe some here, just these are going to be lineal, give it that depth and perspective. Nice and pointy like that. Keep them level. Too easy. Grab a blending brush. See, the sky is still wet. Someone asked me on YouTube in the comments, I did a, a moon subject or a sun sunset, and they said, why don't you do the... Oh, which way was it? The moon first or the clouds first? I can't remember now. <laughs> All right, let me just get this in. Nice and pointy. Get it a bit fat there. And the same again. I'm just gonna blend the bottom of that down to the atmosphere. There we go. Where else are we? Now, I need a bit of dark cloud, so let's try and get some of the dark scene purple in this, what we've already got, and see if we can make a dark shadowy cloud, which I think we're getting there. Just something to sit in front of that sun, to sit the sun back. So we'll sort of come, let's hope this is the right colour, over here, coming right off the painting. See that sun's wet, so you want to be bloody careful how you, how you um, blend it. So I'm just going to, I'll grab a smaller blending brush, I'll just show you what I've got. See like here, that's a small one. And I can use that to get within the body of that cloud and blend the turmoil. I want the bottom of it flat. So I'm not going too harsh into that round sun there. There we go. And maybe one more little bit just along here. Carry on into that one there. And maybe something just a 
about here. Wipe your blending brush, sit it down. Sit this one down lightly, does it? And continue it into that other one over there. That way we've sat it down. All right, I was gonna turn the camera off and but I'm live, I've gotta keep remembering that. All right, um, pretty much we'll take the tape off there. Okay, now I can do the water side of things and the horizon. So I wanna do the water first. Now we're gonna need a toothbrush for this as well. So let's get that water going. I'm gonna have a drink of water and I'll, I'll read some comments. You're gonna try this, says Aurora. Good stuff. Hello, Tina. Oh, so many questions there. Whis Whis Wisconsin, USA. You're my inspiration. Thank you very much. Hello, Jewel. I can just say hello to everybody when I see your names there. William, William, Tina, uh, Tina, Joe. Hello, everybody. Now I'm going to do some water. So the water's going to be pretty much the same flavour as the sky. So where's my putter on a brush? I'll grab that. Just bear with me a minute. I'm just rinsing it out of the water there. So we've got some watercolours here. Um, I might want a bit more. Golly. Uh, I need some more of this. The water can be a bit darker. Uh, we want a bit more retarder. Where did I put that? Have I got the camera down there yet? A bit more retarder in there. Because we want the water to blend as well. So I'm just going to grab this. It's got white and everything in it. Now I'm not worried about the horizon line because it's going to be a good old gap filler of a landmass there. So let's just get this to the horizon line like that. I'm just going to dip my brush in the water a bit and back into the paint so it... There we go. Now let's get all this down there. Okay, that's good. Now I want some more white in there. That's too... A bit too bright for me. I'll just get some of this maybe here. And then that dark purple. So I want to grab the dark scene purple again, which is there. Just so as we can put some of this value in the water as well. I'll move that bottle of water out of the way. Uh, so we got that there. So we want this pretty much all the way here. There we go. Too easy, huh? And now we're going to have some fun with a toothbrush and a knife, okay? So that can get washed and put away. Grab yourself a toothbrush, something, where's a smaller knife? Something that's straight and flickable. Where are we? Flickable, okay? So I'm gonna grab some of the white student paint because it's a soft body. I'll just put some of that there, but before I do, Oh, uh, it should work. Where's my spray bottle? Get some of that wet. I don't want to flick this over the bottom half of the sky, okay? So we're just getting this. Now, if you have a flat brush or whatever you find that works for this flicking better for you, use that, okay? Let's... Now, see the moon, the sun. <laughs> we want all the flickering 
on the water there. So I'll put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to get this concentrated. That's it, just like that. All in this area. More, get more, Ian. I'm loading it up. This is going to be pretty much the shimmering on the water. I've done a another painting like this, but it's in the it's been edited, and that's a edited version. Uh, that'll be up in a couple of days after this one. It was going to go up if I never went live today, but I'm going live today, so obviously whatever I do live is up straight away. I'm just getting more. Now this you've got to muck around with it. You want it really concentrated at this end of the painting and then fading away. You can lay your painting down flat if you want to do this. There's going to be no foreground on this one. And then I'm going to have to get a hair dryer and dry a lot of this. Oh, you know what I should have done? There we go. These aren't stars, these are just the... the flickering in the water. That'll do. That will do it. Wipe my hands. All right, now I'm going to dry it because I've got to put in my land mass. And if I don't dry it, it'll be mudding up a lot. Now, I don't want that to run either. If that runs, I've gone and stuffed it. So I'm just drawing the area where the land mass has got to go. Yeah, the sun can be as big as you want in a painting. Who's that? Never seen the sun that big? Uh, and main. It's not a lifelike painting, so you can get away if you want a massive big sun setting behind the smoke of a bushfire there. Okay, let's get this going. That's the only thing with live, you've got to wait till it's dry. I'll get some cold air on there as well. Just remember all my painting tutorial paintings are for sale. There will be a link in the description below to see what paintings are available. And they're all payable by PayPal. There's a donate PayPal link there if you want to make your purchase payment through there. Okay. Now, I can put my glasses back. We're ready to do the foreground, or the midground there. And I'm going to do it in um, just burnt umber and black. Okay. So, down here, we've got burnt umber. A bit more. And we're going to have some black somewhere. We'll have it over here, eh? Put the black there. Now, give it a bit of a spray so it's going to transfer good. And I want to use a flat brush. Now, how? That's not too bad. It's pretty dry. So you want your bottom reasonably straight. So the actual land mass is going to be the burnt umber. So I'm going to see. I'm mixing it in the water. Hopefully, when I put my brush on the canvas up there, it's going to transfer great. Gratingly great. Okay. Let's come up here. Grab yourself a bullshit stick. Get the bottom. Oh, get out the way, you bottle of water. Get the bottom where you want, which is about there. Uh, we'll get the bottom reasonably straight. Well, not straight, level. It can be crooked but level, you know what I mean? Get that along there. 
So we've pretty much got that where we want it. I can move the stick. And now I'll just get our landmass, let's say, over here. Like that. Block it in, and then we'll use the black to create depth within it because it's going to have a some detail in it. This land mass here is not going to not going to be just dead empty. See, when it, that's why I taped up the bottom. That moon is still wet, and all that retarder that's within it, so it can easily dig out. So that's why I'm just taking careful there. Oh, who we got there? Paddy Campbell. Thank you very much, Paddy. They've just sent in a donation on this Super Chat Live. Uh, also, Sarah Shack. Thank you very much for your donation, Sarah Shack. This is a Super Chat. There's a grey dollar sign where the, the chat bar is. And if you want to support me in a Super Chat, you just click that and follow the prompts to send in a live Super Chat donation and it helps support my content. There we go, I oh, see how it's pulling that away. Okay, now I also wanna just roughly from about here, get it roughly down there in the water as well. Okay, just like that. Easy does it, and I'm gonna dry this so I can add the black Come on, look at that. Get up there. I'll fix it up after I dry it. Good night, William. I'm just drying this because I'm going to add a bit more layer onto it. That brown's a bit dark. I'm going to just taint it with the littlest bit of white and um, just a little bit, not too much, Ian. Uh, just so as we can see it against the black when I put the black on. So. I'm just trying to make it neat. giving it the vibe. A painting needs its own vibe. Don't you reckon? And under the sun here, it doesn't matter if it's a bit bright. <laughs> it's really digging up there. See what it does? That's because of that retarder underneath. All right, I've got to dry it. That's good enough. So now we've got our black down there. I'm just thinking I'll, um, I'll wash that brush. So I'm just washing it. You can't see what I'm doing. doesn't matter. I'm washing it. And now I'm picking up the black. And we'll get some black along here now. So the black is pretty much where... Pretty much in the middle, coming along... like that coming along 
This is just a simple, straightforward beginner's painting. I've just called it a burnt sunset, but you know, you can use any color as a combination for this. And just the layout will create a nice beginner's painting subject for you. Now we'll even put some, where's my, there we go, this brush here. I'm picking up the little flat filbert like a cat's tongue. And what I want to do, this bit here that turned into a dog's breakfast, I want to put some canopies of trees there just like this. Just so it'll look like, wow, that looks like a piece of art. There we go, up in there. So you just remember, you can do this. Watch how I've taught it if you're a very first time beginner and practice and give it a go. And if it's not working, do some more practicing and just remember you can do it. So we've got some beautiful canopy of trees there in that corner. We could probably put some down here as well. Just like that. Just pull it down because I'm going to go over some more of those white speckles later, so don't worry about that. And we want to get some of those pretty much, let's say, do another group over here. You want your paint reasonably wet. Just so it transfers nice. And this is just the straight black now. So it's standing out against that burnt umber. But also keeping it, this subject dark because it's behind, I mean, it's on our side of the sun. The sun's not hitting it. So hence, that's why it's dark. You can probably put some there. That's up to you how much you detail this. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit there. This is just adding the final bullshit effect to your painting, all that little bits of detail, trees and greatness. How's that looking? Yeah, that's all right. And I might put a bit over here as well. Oh. All right, I can wash that brush. I'll zoom out so you can get a, a good look at that. All right, now we'll fix up the sun area here. So I've grabbed my toothbrush again I'll just and we'll load that up with that white paint that's on our palette here that I was using so I'll just grab some of that in there let me dry it first because I want to show you I'll put a bit of tape so if I don't ruin that landmass we've just put there Now, if anything, this has gone a bit on the orange side. I would have liked it a bit more red, but not to worry. It's only a painting. It's not the end of the world. I could probably do this same subject in different colours and get a totally different painting out of it. All right, let's put some low-tack tape across the horizon line there. Okay, I just want to get rid of some of the stickiness off that. Where is our horizon? About here. Somewhere there. That's it. Now I'm going to grab my toothbrush and get some more fleckles. Fleckles or freckles? Yeah, that's it. I need it a little bit more wet.
Tell you what, my laptop and my display screen's got that much paint splattered on it, but that's all right, it's art. Do a little bit out there and come back here again. And what this is creating is when you look at it, you see all those hundreds of bits of light hitting the surface of the water. All right, I'll zoom back out. Is it dark enough? I don't reckon it is, we'll have a look. I could probably do it later on off camera, but now I'm gonna put the water line there as well. So the tape has pretty much created that. You wanna get a knife and some beautiful white titanium paint, so I'll zoom out. I've got paint all over my hands. What have we got there? 114 people watching, that's good stuff. We reached over 100 today. Thank you for your support, everybody. I'm only a bee's knee off 85,000 subscribers, so let's get me up to 100,000. And um, yeah, now where are we? We want a great knife, not a good knife. We want a great knife. I'm just looking for a knife down here. Looking, looking, looking. I don't know which one I'll have. I'll just use this one. Where are we? So how I do it, I butter it out like you're spreading some butter on your bread. Okay, wipe your brush. You've got paint all over it. Where are we, can you see? Yeah. Get your brush on an angle, pull it through. Bingo, you've got a beautiful roll on your brush. Then we will get our water line in. You want these thin as possible. Oh, and here I go putting a big mongrel of a thick thing in there. Thin as buggery. This is pretty much the water against the land. There we go. Now we've done all those fleckles, freckles, whatever. Just stamp this against there like that and that's it. Because those fleckles are all your light hitting. I don't like the way they're, see how their lines like that? What can we do to fix that up? I'm gonna grab me stick and a flathead brush. Okay, so I'm just damping the brush and wiping it dry on a towel. Uh, grab a flathead brush and disturb those big thick lines if you can, just to, that's because I don't like them. If, if you like the way they look, you don't have to do this. But I don't like the way they turned out, so I'm disturbing them. Just, there we go. How's that look? Yeah, not happy, Jan. Not happy. You know what I'll do? I'll just pick up the black paint in me brush. Not worry, not to worry and come back down and kill a lot of that white paint. And I could have, should have dried it first. Wipe your brush and go again with some more black paint. Make sure you don't ruin your painting with your hand leaning on it. There we go, that'll do it. It's just killed it a bit. Uh, where's my little, there it is. I'm liking these, so I'm gonna put some in there. Uh, where are we? Some a nest, a flutter of um, wildlife just fluttering out of the trees there. And it, it's also why I wanna put them there. This purple was supposed to look like it's coming over our head, but we lost that. So these will help with that as well, given it that aspect. So let's go to a group of trees here. And so we got, I need me leaner on a stick. So we've got some, I'm going to go from here and some of them come in front of the, the sun. So I'm just virtually doing dots, lots of dots coming out on an opening V like they're coming out. Now the dots will get bigger. 
just like so. Let's get over there a bit. Keep your brush a bit wet, not too wet, but enough to transfer these beautiful sharp lines and some more dots. Now we can start making them into birds. Just little M's or V's. And having some of them coming over the moon, or oh, not the moon, the sun, it also gives it that artistic vibe. Some have gone over here. And we'll probably do a nice big one here as well. Let me have a look at that. I'm just washing my little brush first and putting it away straight away so it won't get forgotten. Yeah, that's fine. That, that helps the painting out a lot. Hang on, let's zoom out. What have we got there? Oh man, I just came in and looks like I missed a lot. Yeah, you've missed a lot there, Lisa. Lisa, happy. Ruby, g'day Ruby, love your technical terms. Thank you, Ruby Westmoreland. Lola Cara, Lola. Too thick, but I love the acrylic for that reason. Can always fix it. Absolutely. Uh, Nick, g'day Nick, how are you? I was worried if the fires were near you. So much tragedy. Brick house. No, I'm fine, Brick House. Uh, they're, they're not near me, but thank you for your, everyone's concern. Uh, that's looking good. There is a lot more you can do to this painting. What have we got there? 116 people. Thank you very much for watching. Now, you can see this is, I could have put some of the sun reflection there as well. Um, but that's, let's show you, it's the speckle of it on the water. Does it look like it? You know, you could put some palm trees here, some lengthy stuff. You can put a jetty, where are we? I'll zoom back out. You can put a jetty over here, even. Anything you want. More clouds while your sky is wet. All right, I'm going to have a mouthful. Do you like me bottles of water? Got me own bottles of water. Beautiful. Nice to hydrate yourself. I'm going to zoom yous back over here. All right. Oh, no. We forgot. Got a whack a frame on it, don't you, eh? That's how you have a look at it. Who we got there? Thank you very much, Bev Sowers. Beautiful cyber hugs and kisses to you, my sweetheart. She's just made a super chat donation. Thank you very much for that, Bev. All right, we're going to whack a frame on it. Now, just remember, if you want to appear in any of my YouTube videos and tell me when it's time to whack a frame on it, you just private message me and we'll get the ball going. See down there, you can see what you're all saying down there, can't you, eh? <laughs> all right, let's look at that. There's, let's, it's a bit, there it is with a frame on it, okay? That don't look too bad, it's not too shabby, and you as a beginner, you can do that. If you think you can't, do a lot of practicing. You can practice procedures. Put your type of trees, your type of sky. All right, let's come back over here. All right, where are we? And for those of you, since last October, I still have not lit up a cigarette. Very happy, very pleased and very proud of myself for that. Um, there's a bit of a delay there. Like I said, all my paintings are for sale. Check out the links in the description below. There's about nine links there, I think. And at this stage, so if you're watching the replay, check out the time date this video was uploaded. At this stage, all my tutorial paintings are 74 US dollars. That includes shipping and posting to your door. That includes all the fees that are taken out of everything and whatnot. And it gets it to your house 
no matter where you're living in, in, in the world, not Australia, the world, Europe, America, Australia, Asia, wherever, okay? Uh, there's a link for my bloopers. Check them out. There's a bit of fun and laugh in them, but do be careful. There is coarse, mild to coarse language in them. It's where all the mistakes happened. Uh, when I had other people on set help me film and mistakes were made and they were filmed and they made up some beautiful bloopers. Good to have a laugh at. Who else we got here? We got Kimberly. G'day, Kimberly. How are you? Beautiful painting. Love it. Lovely. Thank you. And I love your comment for that, Kimberly. Um, so good for you. I had to spell of smoking about two weeks when my cat passed. Oh, that's pretty sad if your cat passes. Love it. Love it. Uh, you didn't sign it, says Rob. Bloody didn't either, did I? Bloody hell. Oh, you know what? I'll bring you back over because we've only been going for 50 minutes. I'll bring you back over and we'll sign it. Where are we? I've got a, um, I've got a gel pen here. I'll do it over this side where the, um, where the paint's dry. I'm hoping. Let me see. Oh, we're too far away here and we're not going to see that. Oh, God, I'll bring you over, won't I? <laughs> All right, let's get down there. Let's put an autograph on here. Good thing about live, eh? You people can say, hey, Ian, you forgot something, boy. Now, is this pen going to work? Or oh, the paint's a little bit on the wet side. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. It's like a white paint pen, but it was called a gel pen. It would work way better if the painting was dry. And I think all that did was scratch the paint off down to the white canvas. But over here you can see what it does. It's good for doing whiskers and stuff on a cat if you're painting your cat. All right, there we go. You can see the water glistening now we'll get back here and i can say hello to a few people because we're live and when it's live people like to know who's on board there <coughs> <coughs> excuse me now i got the wrong contacts in that's too blurry i can just see that karen Karen Mc, do forgive me if I get your name wrong. Karen McHenry, totally inspired me. Gonna try this one. Good stuff. That's what it's all about. And that's what all my YouTube videos are about, for you to try and paint. And if people want to buy them, buy them. There is a um, notice in my um, edited versions that says, do not copy or duplicate the video file. That doesn't mean you can't copy or paint the subject. That just means don't download the actual video off YouTube onto your computer and then go and upload it somewhere else and make it out it's your video. That's all that means, okay? Uh, it looks wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, great your painting, says Robert Dana. Good on you, Robert. Um, Sarah Shack Karen, you can do it. Absolutely. Well, that's not too shabby, Ian. Yeah, it's not too shabby. Are you rock, Ian? Hi, Steve. Thank you very much there, Sarah Shack. Lovely kisses and cyber hugs to you, my darling Sarah Shack. All right, who else we got there? What is the black surface behind the painting? Oh, that, this one here. That, uh, I'll take my frame away so you can actually see. And I'll just show you what I do when I'm finished filming. Just for you people, you only get to see when it's live. This is a, a bit of whiteboard and it's screwed to my easel. Um, let me put that brush in there so it won't go hard. Okay, everything's done there. And, and all the paints that I've used, they're here so I can write them down and tell you what colors we've used. Now, I've got to get this off. This canvas panel that I made is just double-sided taped, which I'll show you, to the back of the panel, okay? And this is a black board. Well, it was a white board, but I painted it black. Just so for filming purposes, you can see what I'm painting. I rub all the lumps away. And then that'll be repainted again. What I'm, why I'm doing this it just gets the 
lumps and ridges off the board so I can paint it black again later on. I'll come in, clean up my brushes and everything, but that's just a board painted in black gesso. The actual camp, um, what do you call it? The easel is a table easel, but I've got it sitting on a crate, hence the standing height, and everything's painted in black gesso, okay? So that's all that is. And I put these onto a certain height, so when I whack my frame on it, it's gonna sit there perfectly. And that's why I wear gloves as well. People say, why do you wear gloves? I like to protect me bloody hands, don't I? All right, what do we got there, Indy? G'day, g'day, Indy, how are you? Beverly? Lavender, what do you use to sign your paintings? I use a small script liner or a paint pen, pretty much either or either one of those, okay? Um, Kimberly, I need advice on pricing for paintings. I usually charge a dollar per square inch. Whoa, that's expensive, I'll tell you that. Uh, what would you suggest? I'd suggest, I haven't seen the quality of your paintings. Uh, um, I, I charge 50 cents a square inch. That's pretty much the makeup of my pricing. If I was to do a big one, whatever. And sometimes bigger, you can bring the price down. You don't go by, well, it took me six months or four months. I want four months worth of work out of it. You go by the subject and how much, about 45 to 50 cents a square inch and going on the subject and also your expertise and your popularity can, can conduct the price level as well okay uh, so look into those who we got there karen mchenry thank you very much my darling she's just made a super chat donation there cyber hugs and kisses to you so that's how you can go about pricing your paintings and like i said if it's taken you two or three weeks you don't put two or three weeks worth of wages into it or six months or whatever you go by the square inch, um, a dollar a square inch though is, uh, that would make mine around uh, uh, so about 150 US dollars just for that little painting, which is quite dear. Um, unless you're it's super, super popular and um, people will bend over backwards to get your work, you can charge that price. I'm not saying you shouldn't be charging it. I don't even know who you are as an artist or what your work looks like. Uh, your work probably well deserves that price, but I'm just saying as a, as a flat, 45 to 50 cents a square inch. Uh, I've just got a dirty mark on there from, yeah, there you go, when I touched it. So I'm gonna fix that up right about now with a brush, because that's gonna annoy the living bejesus out of me. So I'll get a bit of this paint if it's still available. And easily, Taint it in there, come on, come on. There we go. So whoever buys this painting will see that little bit of fix up. <laughs> All right, where are we? I've got to get back here. All right, so. All you hundred odd people, I've got to love yous and leave yous and say goodbye because it's the end of the show. Uh, Lola Carter, do they sell Retarder in art supply stores? Yes, they do. That's where I get mine from. Um, I use either Jasonjays or Atelier. It's just, a, it looks like baby oil, but it is not baby oil. I don't know what it is. Uh, and it's just slows down the drying time of your acrylic paints. And it allows me, if you've seen a lot of my work, to get the look I get in my paintings, okay? Sorry you came late, says Lisa. That's okay, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Kimberly, thank you for the advice. You're welcome. Great seeing you live. I love your painting style. I love the size of your arms under that cape you are wearing, Ian. You are so, I can tell you are so huge and big under there with full muscle, says Lisa Harvey. Yes, thank you very much. There is a lot of site. There's a lot of real estate under here, but I do have to hide it. Otherwise, the viewers will not be there. They'll be all on their back fainting, and we don't want that. <laughs> I'm allowed to be a cheeky bugger. Uh, thank you, Brickhouse. Uh, hello from Rossi. I've got to go now. Lola Carter. All right, thank you very much. And if you like what I'm doing, uh, tell your friends and family. Uh, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.
Okay, and I'll just say it's Uru from The Guru.